Good afternoon, it's April the 10th. It's, uh, looks nice, but it's quite windy. I'm actually putting my gloves on because I can, I think my hands are going to be chilly um, as I walk in the wind. We'll find out momentarily. I did walk yesterday, but it was kind of aborted. It was only 10 minutes and then I stopped because it started to rain. So I didn't bother posting a permanent version of that, but the, the live feed is there if you want to watch 10 minutes of it. Oh, well, in the sun it feels nice enough. So I'm going to do a walk today I haven't done for a while, uh, which is over to the Grow Regina Community Garden. See what it's looking like as spring sets in. Also, <coughs> it seems like I should go today because there's a snowstorm coming later in the week. Some big uh, Colorado low coming up from the states is going to hit Manitoba particularly hard, but it'll clip the southeast corner of our province, they're saying. So we could get 10 or 15 centimeters of snow. We'll see. It's still a little early to call that for sure. It won't last because it's double digits again the week after that, but... Uh, yeah, it's kind of expected. You hate to see it. You get all the snow gone and then it snows again. It's really depressing, but that is spring in Saskatchewan. I won't walk along the creek because I'll do that tomorrow. So I'll walk through the streets over to the footbridge. I spent the morning uh, doing book cover design for Duotero, which is a novel by, science fiction novel by Brad C. Anderson that Shadowpaw Press Reprise is putting out a new edition of. So I'm getting very close there to ordering a proof copy from Amazon, see what it's going to look like. Hi, Kirk in Vancouver. I thought I'd use my wireless mic, but it's just actually so much easier just to plug in the cord, so... And the wireless one... Even though it works, I've been burned too often by those things. Not literally, figuratively. So sticking with the uh, wired mic today. And it has the little fur ball on it because it's windy. So hopefully that'll cut down on some of the wind noise. <coughs> This way and then cut over to the Cornwall where the bridge touches. In the sun I feel silly wearing gloves but when the wind's blowing they make my hands more comfortable so. Yeah. I thought those were uh, street cleaner signs. They're not but that is coming up, but uh, might snow on them this week. Right now, in the sun, out of the wind, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yesterday I spent all day editing stories for uh, Spring Magazine, which is a magazine of emerging writing, writers, writing, emerging, writing by emerging writers, I guess. Uh, that's run by the Saskatchewan Writers Guild, and I'm the managing editor and prose editor this year, this issue. So uh, that all had to be done. Once I have all the edited material, then I have to pick a order and then talk to the layout person about it. And then there's book uh, magazine launches in June. One in Regina and one in Saskatoon, which I'm looking forward to. That's going to start happening. I've got uh, Sask Expo in Saskatoon at the end of this month. I got to, probably this week, I got to go through all my books and see if I need to order anything. There's just enough time probably to get more if I need them. 
and maybe not even enough time actually actually probably not even enough time so I'm maybe stuck with what I've got for this round but uh, then in June the uh, same thing in Regina got those magazine launches also just the beginning of next month Saskatchewan Library Association annual meeting I'm gonna have a shadow pop press display there so so much to do hopefully I make some money at those tables I usually do Saskatoon can be expensive because it's three nights in a hotel but as it happens I have some free nights coming so that just takes it down to fuel and food for the trip so I should come out ahead on that one depending on the crowds I mean will people come out the vendors are there it's going to be uh, packed vendor wise so hopefully it's also packed people wise people aren't too scared to come out Ooh, creek is very high and moving along at a goodly clip. You don't see this much current very often in Wascana Creek. Down that way. And if I turn this way, you can see this foam flowing down the middle there. Give you some idea of how quickly the water is moving right now. sky's pretty but again I'm not gonna walk along the creek I'm gonna go straight over into uh, Lakeview over here go up to Hill Avenue follow it out to Queen which will take us right by the uh, community garden and come back through the park and back through the view again is the way this walk will go. I'm going to sort of zigzag over towards Hill Avenue just until I hit it, however that works out. So this here is Regina Avenue. Still snow lurking in the shade and uh, Apparently going to get a little replenishment later this week. But it won't amount to anything. It'll melt quickly. You can't stop spring. Yeah. It's been above freezing now for a month and the snow is still not completely gone. Some nice gardens along here before long. Interesting to see if anybody started doing anything at the community garden. Do people start preparing this early? I don't know, not being a gardener. It's about two kilometers from my house to Grow Regina. Which is nothing when you're driving, but 20 minutes when you're walking. Or thereabouts. Don't really know. I guess I'll see when I get there. It's 20 minutes downtown and I think that's a little less than two kilometers to the Hotel Saskatchewan from my house which is the walk I make most often. So this should be about 20 or 25 minutes to get to the garden and then I'll walk a bit more down south. So the whole walk is about an hour, I know from past experience. Couple of the newer houses along here, more over there. We're coming up, of course, 
if I kept going this way, I'd go by Lakeview School. And since I'm zigzagging, we will zig to the right here. Oh, actually, I'm uh, further than I thought. That's Lakeview there. So I was looking up at uh, Lakeview United Church. There's Lakeview School. The old part is quite old. The new part was built in the 30s. <laughs> I'm only wearing runners today, so I'll be avoiding anything that looks muddy, like alleyways. There are little traffic control islands down here. It slows down cars like that truck. Or trucks like that car. No. Cars like that truck. That doesn't make sense. Vehicles like that truck. There's a baseball field here, and there's an outdoor rink, which obviously is no longer in functioning condition. And then there's a, like a BMX track over there, which they only built a little while ago. It's getting a lot of use right now. Oh yeah, on a playground, which we'll go by here. people over there. Almost looks like a competition, but I think it's just people having fun. There's the playground. Two newer houses I kind of saw being built because we do so much rehearsing here at Lakeview United Church. Pretty nice playground. I would have loved it as a kid. Lake to United Church. Lyric often has rehearsed there for various things. Both of the shows I wrote and directed rehearsed there. As Time Goes By, a love story with music and the ghosts and the music shop, both of which had a fantastical element. Me being me, first one, as you might guess from the name, had ghosts. The second one had a mysterious automated piano player and uh, a woman who seemed to be more than a century old running the shop. A more modern house there. Nice garage and background. Port. I like the looks of that one. The layout of it. I haven't walked down this particular piece of road very often because that house does not look familiar. Oh, well, I guess I've gone down the alley there. I remember that house. A couple of blocks yet till uh, Hill. First we go over McCallum. The importance of those names, McCallum and Hill, is perhaps indicated by the fact that Regina's first skyscraper was the McCallum Hill building. And the Hill companies continue. In fact, I uh, helped them celebrate their centennial a few years ago by portraying Walter Scott, the first Premier of Saskatchewan, at an event here and one in Calgary. I'm sure I'm about twice the size of Walter Scott from what I've seen of him, picture-wise. I'm also sure, pretty sure he had a Scottish accent, which I did not attempt when I did that, although I did it 
for the centennial of the Regina Cyclone when I played Mayor McCara, I believe his name was. Early mayor of Regina, who had also been born in Scotland, and I did put I did put on a Scottish accent for that one. I'm not very good at it, but you have to put your you have to put your throat you have to put put your your voice back in your throat in order to really make it work. <laughs> I apologise to any Scots who might have listened to that. Whereas when you're doing the Irish, it's more forward in your voice. The Irish seems to be on the tip of your tongue. Oh, the Scottish seems to be back there in your throat. Aye, laddie. Ah, they're magically delicious. Oh yes, I'm sure my Irish accent was somewhat based on the leprechaun from... <laughs> what are they called? Lucky... Lucky Charms? But I got complimented on it when I did it. I had to do an Irish accent for uh, Who Has Seen the Wind at uh, Persephone Theatre in Saskatoon, playing Uncle Sean. And uh, someone who knew told me afterwards that I indeed sounded Irish. I just didn't sound like I came from the part of Ireland that the character said he came from. And I said, well, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> I was not unhappy about that. At least I hit the island. I'm like, uh, first time I had to do an accent, it was supposed to be a North Country, you know, the, the Liverpool, like John Lennon. And uh, trouble was when uh, someone commented on that one, apparently I'd missed it by a few miles and they said I sounded Scottish. Oh well. character was putting on the accent in the show, which was Sleuth, because, not to give too much away, but there's a character there that actually disguises himself and, and uh, portrays somebody entirely different, and so I did an accent. I also wore a bald wig, which was a bad choice. We didn't really have the, this was when I was at Crocus City Theatre in Weyburn, we really didn't have the technical skills to do a bald wig. And years later, when I moved to Regina, and I got involved in theater here, makeup person. I think it was Nora Berg, who's actually done a lot of uh, directing and is directing Little Women for Regina Lyric Musical Theater right now. And I've performed with her since then. But uh, she remembered that because she said when, it, when I came on stage, she uh, turned to whoever she was with and said, if she ever did any makeup that bad, she was getting out of the business. So <laughs> that's kind of the state that was in. This is the Hill Avenue shopping strip. Various things, lots of nails and hair. Drugstore. Brood Awakening coffee shop. I've never been in this one. I could easily walk here and hang out as a different place to work. Kind of got out of the coffee shop habit. I'd like to get back to it because I think I actually think I work harder out of my or more effectively when I'm not in my home office. Okay, I've walked by there many times. I didn't bother putting out every store along the way. Then there's a gas station here in the corner. We go downhill to Queen, and Queen will take us right to the Grow Regina Community Garden my turnaround destination for this walk. I'll cross over to the other side when I get a chance. Why did the live streamer cross the road to get to the other side? Like now. Ever 
Things looking more springy all the time. Right up till the snow comes later this week again. Our backyard is soon going to be a mess because we're building an extension and a deck. And I'm uh, mostly concerned about the cat. He's going to hate having people in the backyard running a machinery, especially when it's time for the jackhammer. I think we're all going to hate that. hope it doesn't bring the whole house down. There's an old cement porch that has to come out. Thinking I might even, maybe should take him over to our condo. We'd have to take litter too, of course, and food. Probably that'd be more traumatic than him just cowering upstairs, waiting for the noise to stop. Oh well, nothing to be done about it. King Street. We don't want King Street. We want Queen Street. Although this would work too. I mean, multiple ways to get there. But my goal is to walk all the way to Queen and then turn. It's the 7th day Adventist Church over there, an associated school. This used to be a fire hall, but now it's something to do with the health department. You can tell just by looking at it, it was a fire hall. And now it's got something to do with the Capel Health District. And I don't think it's got ambulances in it either, although I suppose it might. It could be like a secondary ambulance place, I guess. I've been in there. We had services in there with our church years ago when uh, we didn't really have a permanent home at the time. Not that I'm really active in that church anymore, but I remember having a service in there. I like this little church. Next one should be Queen. So how long to here? 22 minutes? Yeah, well it'll be 25 at least. Let's actually hit the garden. I like the sky today, it's blue with white clouds. I think it's the contrast has made the, the camera make the sky look bluer. <laughs> the wind's coming straight off the prairie up here, straight in my face. So it must be blowing pretty much out of the west, blowing due east. Based on the chill in my face and the dust in my contact, which is really annoying. This time of year is bad for that because it's usually our windiest time of year, April, and there's lots of dust around, so I often end up with grit in my eyes, which is annoying no matter who you are, but doubly annoying if you wear contacts. So I have to wait till my eye waters enough to wash it out, which hopefully it'll do. Before the other one gets something in it. Because when you got it in both eyes, oh, torture. Hmm. Should wear sunglasses to help prevent that, but then I can't see the screen at all. Not that there's been a lot of action on the comment side today. But when there is, I like to be able to respond. Ah, man, it's a nasty one. Oh, maybe that got it. Mine is watering, but it doesn't seem to have grit in it anymore. So it's like a little piece of the north, these trees or the mountains. You can see a stand of spruce like that, or a lodgepole pine, whatever those are. I don't know if they're spruce or pine. 
we have a spruce, but in our front yard, it doesn't look quite like that. It's a very broad street along here for some reason. So I've often come at the gardens from that way, gone further down and then come back, but I wasn't sure if it'd be muddy along the uh, river there, so creek. So today I came from this direction. I'm going to go that direction. Go check out the new school they're building down at the other end of the park. So I work my way back. Well, I don't see anybody doing any preparatory work yet, but I think we can walk into the garden and get a sense of what it looks like. Oh, a couple of geese. Storm channel. A little snow still lurking down there. A little snow still lurking in the shade of the garden. We're going to go that way next. We'll go take a look at the gazebo for the first time since spring hit. I know I was here during the winter, but you couldn't walk into the garden then because it was just too uh, snowy. There's a... Uh, Here Regina, it has these Vic Sikansky figures here on either side, and then Sikansky is a noted local artist. Also created the gazebo here in the middle. So it won't be long before people will be planting in here. Not much to look at right now. And as you can see, it has lots of plots. the gazebo. So it's like the pillars are trees and the overarching roof is actually like a tree canopy. Of course it has holes in it so if it's raining you want to get in the middle. <laughs> and then well it's hard to see with these chairs here but there's various vegetables and things and the uh, railing there beans and tomatoes, other things like that. We'll just go down a different path here, pretty much all the same right now. There's sand here, but I can tell it's quite uh, damp underneath. Otherwise this would just be mud I'm walking in. Well, somebody might have been doing some cleanup in that one. That church, or school, church I think right there, is where we voted in the last federal election. Unfortunately, Trudeau still got in, despite our opinions. I won't walk down this side of the creek. There's kind of a path along there somewhere, I think, but it could be muddy. So we'll go over to the other side where there's more of a proper path. We're going to go down to the far end of the park here. So we'll come back. Maybe the next time we come back to the Grow Regina garden, there'll actually be some gardening going on. I like to come this way several times over the course of the summer because it keeps changing as gardens do. This is uh, Kinsman Park South. It's the formal name. It's quite a big one. daughter has a friend who lives or lived. She's off at university just like my daughter I think at the moment but uh, their house is over there not too far. When we would visit bring her over here she and her friend would sometimes come over to the park to play.
There's also a bridge, I think, over the uh, storm channel up here, a little further along. Oh, it seems quite abandoned. I thought there'd be more people out in the park today, but I guess not. A lot of grass. Brown grass, but you can even see spots where it looks like the grass is thinking of greening up now that it's exposed to the sun, so that's usually the first thing that goes green, is the grass. And the next thing you know, we have to mow it again. It's not snow shoveling, it's grass mowing. Our grass is terrible. It needs to be replaced. But that's still far lower priority than this deck we're building, which is a big chunk of change. But it needs to be done if we're going to enjoy the backyard, which we would like to as we as we move into our twilight years. Not for a while yet. Oh, I saw a story today about Jeremy Clarkson, who's about to turn 62. I'm 62. Nice. Well-known British television presenter, as they call them. Most famous for, uh, sorry to say Top Gun, but that's not it. Top Gear driving show. And his new one, or the newer version of that, called, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's on uh, Amazon Prime and we really enjoy it. Anyway, I wasn't able to read the article because it was behind a paywall, but he was talking about getting old because he's about to turn 62, and I thought, give me a break. <laughs> These days, 62 is older than 42 or 52, but it's not old. I don't feel old. But I suspect, part of his persona, he's partly just you know, being provocative or interesting, because that's what he gets paid to do, is be provocative and interesting. If I'm provocative, I don't get paid for it. <laughs> More likely to lose readers who disagree with my opinion, because you're not supposed to even follow or read anybody who doesn't have exactly the right opinions has proclaimed from some central opinion-making group, as far as I can tell. Whereas, I disagree with probably everybody I've interviewed on my podcast about something. But that's not the point of the podcast. We're talking about the creative process of science fiction and fantasy writers. So I don't care if they're left-wing fruitcakes or whatever, or right-wing fruitcakes. As long as they can write a good story, I'm interested in talking to them about their process. Alrighty, still a ways to go. This is a very long park. But almost to the street here. And then uh, I just wanted to come down all this way because I wanted to check out the progress of the new school they're building over here. There's actually a podcast called Our Opinions Are Correct. And I think they probably mean that humorously, but it annoys me, that title, because I'm not sure they mean it humorously. They may actually think that they have the correct opinions about everything. And that anyone who disagrees with them is not just wrong, but bad or evil. It needs to be cancelled or destroyed. 
and that's probably not being fair to them but that's what that's kind of a kind of a culture we're in right now and as a free speech absolutist it annoys bothers and troubles me interesting front on that house should get a good signal here giant cell phone tower there I don't know if I'm on uh, LTE or 5G 5G is slowly spreading across the city so downtown I get on the 5G but at our house I'm still on LTE which is still pretty darn good I mean I was having internet trouble uh, had the tech today and nothing in our house it seems to be a problem external which uh, hopefully he's cleared up for the moment anyway although at some point they may have to replace cable down our alley apparently I'm not the only person who's had some internet issues um, it's just these random dropouts and then which is annoying like it happened while I was doing a podcast the other day and suddenly I wasn't able to do my podcast had to reschedule with the author very annoying Uh, anyway, I was having some internet issues. I said that. What was I? What was I going for when I started that ramble? <laughs> Don't know. Mine's going. One digression too many. It's like these parentheticals. You get too many parentheses and you lose track of the original <laughs> encapsulating <laughs> text. So here's the new school they're building. Oh, right, I was talking about LTE. And even though it wasn't 5G, using my hotspot, which I had to do for a while, for most of my purposes was just fine for browsing and stuff like that. In fact, I even used it to watch TV. Um, although I hit my uh, slowdown point. I have an unlimited data plan, but you get slowed down if you use too much high-speed data. This is a big complex. I think it's maybe two schools, like a separate and public together. But yeah, this goes on forever. Compared to the little one here, that's the old school, Argyle School. I presume it gets torn down. Or maybe not. Maybe it's all just going to be connected. It actually looks like it is connected, maybe down there. I'll uh, maybe take a walk down this next street a little bit. Or into the playground here. To see what's what down at the other end of the school. Oh, well, I can't really go too far this way, but you can see kind of what they're doing here. Oh, yeah. it's all fenced as you would expect but see if I can see if they connect there should be a way out through the alley into the alley over there maybe does it connect uh, no I don't think so I think the old school just ends and then the new one begins it's about three times the size of the old one the, this and the other one put together so pretty impressive must be a lot of kids in this neighborhood. They need to expand like that. Oh, what's that? Hello, Amar? Oh, you grew up in this area? Hi, Amaran. Well, this is the new Argyle School. There's the old Argyle School. And there's the new one. Still a ways to go, but when I first started coming this way, it was just a hole in the ground, so it's better than a hole in the ground. Better than a hole in your head. But um bum Beats a hole in the head. Still a lot of snow out here. Right then. 
Let's go back up the alley. So that's kind of the turnaround point at ooh, 40 minutes. Yeah, this will be over an hour by the time I get home. I mean, I walked some of the way back to the east coming this way. No, well, I did find a little mud, but it's not too bad. And there'll be more mud soon because there's snow coming later this week, they say. Possibly quite a bit of it. They don't know for sure. That's kind of a cool house. The glass turret there, I like that feature. I like turrets. You think, you think of castles. This is Argyle. I don't really want to watch, walk up Argyle. So I'm going to go over one more block. I've been in that house. I'm almost sure I've been in that house. For some sort of music rehearsal. Whoever lived there at the time it made sense. It is actually a crosswalk light, but I don't need it. I seem to remember singing next to a piano in that house. Where is this place? You mean the city or? <laughs> well, uh, that was Kinsman Park South, at the south end of which is Argyle School right there. This is Argyle Road. I'm not sure what our cross street is at the moment. The city is, of course, Regina, Saskatchewan. Regina is the capital of the province. It's the home of the RCMP. We have the exhibition, and in addition, Regina has CKCK TV. I mentioned before, that song played on TV when I was a kid, and things that played on TV when you were a kid are with you forever. So I still remember a great many of the lyrics to that song. The only part that always I never quite grasped was all these uh, neighborhoods that they list at one point. Whitmore Park, Douglas Park, something park too, that sort of stuff. You can take a scenic drive around Roscana. Oh, I walked around it on Friday. At Regina campus, get a degree. It was Regina campus at the University of Saskatchewan, now it's the University of Regina. Folks that till the soil are drilled for oil. They watch CKCK TV. That part's still true, except it's not CKCK TV anymore. It's just CKTV, if they even call it that. CTV Regina, really, I think. That's what they call it. But the same uh, TV station I've been out too many times. One of the first times I was on TV was on CKCK TV in high school. They had a program called Debate, which was high school debate, special made for TV format half an hour to debate some pressing issue of the day. And my partner and I debated on there. I think the topic was, be it resolved that future political leaders in Saskatchewan be elected by universal popular suffrage of major political parties in Saskatchewan, be elected by universal popular suffrage. Well, that might've been the one we did for the provincial debate tournament. Maybe it was a different one. Yeah, I think that was the provincial debate tournament. So I guess I don't remember the one we did for TV. But I remember being on TV. In the huge old um, cameras they had at the time. These huge gray boxes. Weighed a ton, pushed around on three-wheeled platforms. That was probably my first time on TV. Probably. I know the my dad's chorus was on TV on chorus tours, so it could have been one or the other side of that. Anyway, high school. I made my TV debut. Now I've been on TV a lot because I used to host a TV show. So <laughs> I'm very comfortable on TV. <laughs> I like this house too. I've walked by it many times. An interesting porch and a nice landscaped, different sort of landscaping in the yard here. It's very nice. I 
Albert Street is just over there. I could go over that way and go home a different path, I guess. This is a uh, senior's place that uh, we looked at for my wife's mother at one point. Precious Memories Care Home. Ooh, that's a high school reference too. One of the songs that we did in choir was a hymn called Precious Memories. Precious memories, how they linger. In one of our, or one of his recordings, maybe not when I was on of the chorus, because he put out records during his years there. It was called Precious Memories. I am just full. of useless, useless knowledge. It's my lived experience. Cinnaboyne Avenue. I used to know somebody that lived on a Cinnaboyne. I think their house must have been down there. Oh, there's a new big new one going in. Big new one. Hmm. That's a big one. I think it's on two lots. Um, speaking of rehearsing, Ty Productions, Tom and Yvonne Ellis, Tom and Yvonne Ellis, T-Y-E, Ty Productions, lived, I think, on that bit of Assiniboine, and uh, maybe a little bit further down, and rehearsed in their house many a time. Hello. First show I did, first time I met my friend Robert Erson, Harry Thomas, the composer and director, who had, has directed me at a million shows and accompanied me and was my best man, taught my daughter voice, all that good stuff. He's now artistic director for Do It With Class Young People's Theater. But uh, first time I met him was doing a Thai production show. It was a review called This Can't Be Love, Love Songs. Hey, I really am in your neighborhood. <clears throat> Did you know Tom and Yvonne Ellis? I don't actually know how long they'd lived there. House had the feel they'd been there a long time. Yvonne was very involved with music and performing. And Regina, one of the things that Ty did towards the end of its time was uh, called the Golden, Golden Age Variety Show. And it was uh, older performers performing again. And the fact that I am now in the same age group as the people who performed in the Golden Age Variety Show worries me a bit, going back to 62 not being old, but for sometimes, some things it starts to feel old. Rob has talked about remounting the Golden Age Variety Show. I kind of wish he would. We are good performers, my cohort. Oh, I didn't know he lived around here. Mel Hill. Well, as they say, everybody's got to be somewhere. You never would have thought that Burton Cummings would end up living in Moose Jaw. As far as I know, he's still there. Or, for that matter, Jan Martel, author of Life of Pi, settling in Saskatoon all those years ago. He's undoubtedly the most famous author currently living in Saskatchewan, I'm sorry to say. Although, I now have a Wikipedia page. I discovered that last night. Somebody had put up a, a stub, as they're called, just a basic placeholder, really, with some basic information about me. Some of which is wrong, but that's Wikipedia for you. So I went in and fixed what I could. I can edit it, so I'll add more. Although I have to be sure to cite things appropriately so it doesn't end up with a note that says citation needed. And the fact that I'm, it's about me does not, I'm not a citation, it has to be something external, I think. I don't know much about Wikipedia. Oh, it's cool that I've got a Wikipedia entry now, Edward Wilbert. Look it up. 
It doesn't mention my live stream walking though. It doesn't even mention my podcast. That's one thing I really should add. Since it's an award-winning podcast. And it doesn't mention my Saskatchewan Book Awards, although it mentions my Saskatchewan Book Award and my nominations, although it mentions Aurora Awards. And the nonfiction list is limited to two books that are related to science fiction and fantasy. It doesn't touch the 40 or 50 others that I've written. So if I really want to bring it up to date, I've got a lot of work to do. fairly far down the priority list, but... Okay, we're back to Hill. I am very close to Albert. So, maybe I'll go down over the Albert Street Bridge. I'm going to come out sort of in the middle of the park. If we go down to the Albert Street Bridge, we can look at the uh, water pouring out of the lake, so that seems like reason enough to do that. Oh, have I mentioned? I must have mentioned it yesterday in that aborted walk. But I haven't mentioned it today that, speaking of awards, Star Song, my young adult science fiction novel published by Shadowpaw Press last year, is a finalist for the Aurora Award for Best Young Adult Novel, up against some big names like Kelly Armstrong. So I'm not counting on anything. But uh, that's cool. Very orange front there. The Aurora Awards are fan nominated and voted on by members of the Canadian Science Fiction Fantasy Association each year. Um, now, if you would like to vote for me <laughs> or anyone else, you can see the complete ballot at their website, which is pre, pre Aurora Awards. Not free, like Aurora Awards runs together. Aurora, not Aurora Awards, but pre Aurora Awards. P R I X A U R O R A W A R D S dot C A, I think. Oh. That's the house I always notice in the snow because it's such a bright, refreshing color in a gray winter landscape. And now it just looks like spring, so it works for multiple seasons. Um, you can find the ballot there. And if you want to join the Canadian Science Fiction and Fantasy Association, well, first of all, you have to be a Canadian resident or citizen. But uh, it's only $10 Canadian. It's like $8 US. And then you can vote for the Aurora Awards. Aurora Awards and nominate next year. I have won one. No, two. But for writing, I've won one. My uh, second novel for Daw Books, Mars Seguro, uh, won Aurora Award for Best Long Form Work in English, it was called then. Should have been the launch to a fabulous career. Unfortunately, didn't really seem to influence sales very much. The second book in that but well, it was never a series, but it, two books, uh, Terra and Segura, was shortlisted the following year for best novel. And uh, I've had now three books nominated for best young adult novel, shortlisted. Uh, Twist of the Blade, the second book in the Shards of Excalibur series, and Door into Fairy, the last book in the series. We're both shortlisted for Aurora Awards and now Star Song. And then I won one for the World Shapers podcast in 2019. I was shortlisted the next year but didn't win. Didn't make the shortlist last year. I'm back on the shortlist this year. I'd like to win because then I would have one of every version of the Aurora Awards. They redesigned them. It used to be. Well, they called it the cheese grater, <laughs> uh, which wasn't really fair, but it was this really clever metal cut uh, trophy. If you looked at it from the top, it said SF. But if you looked at it from any angle, you could see a cut out maple leaf in the middle of it, these three pieces of metal. 
And of course, they curved like the Aurora. It's very clever, done by a Calgary artist. But when he stopped being able to make them, they went with a plexiglass design, which I won, or a glass, I don't know what it is exactly, but with, you know, Aurora, just embossed on it kind of thing, which is also nice. I won that in 2019, but they've already redesigned it again. I can't remember why. And the new one is uh, colored glass, I think, which is kind of cool. So uh, we'll go over this way because I have to get over to the bridge anyway. Do I walk down Albert for a block or two? No, I think I'll stay over here because Albert's more likely to get dust in my eyes. Always point out that house hasn't been a single dwelling for a long time. I think it turned into a kind of a group home back in the 50s, maybe. And I don't know, it probably got various suites in it now. Apartments. <clears throat> I think it was like a, a home for wayward girls or something like that. I'd have to look in my own book, Historic Walks of Vagina and Musha, which I don't have memorized, which is unfortunate because I pass all these houses, I'm sure, probably in there. Like, that's an interesting looking one. Can't tell you anything about it though. Off the top of my head. <clears throat> if I could figure out some way to reference the book and hold the gimbal, I could walk around and do the whole tour, although it would take a long time if you stopped and read every one of the entries. I'd have to do it in multiple stages, I think. Avenue. I like that house too. Very classic. Kind of New England look to that one, I think. Or Home Alone, maybe. You can see a house like that on their street. sheaves of wheat or grass. Nice front gate entry. I kind of like that look too. Don't think it would look work on our house because of where we're located. But. Everything looks nice today because the sun is all lighting up the houses here. Oh, here's one for sale. Looks like it was probably recently renovated. If you're looking, there's the sign. Pause quick. It's really been working on this one too. I don't know if that brick, fa brick facade is new. It doesn't really look like it. But I know they've been going in and out of there. A rather forbidding backyard fence here for privacy. And then we're on Regina Avenue. With Albert Street right there. So once we get across Regina Avenue, it's straight down the uh, over the bridge, not through the woods. I'll lose my garage now. I'm getting warm enough, even with a bit of breeze. I don't feel I need them. So, coming up to the Albert Street Bridge.
This gray house in the corner is actually a very old house that was in my book and then it was completely renovated. Doesn't look anything like it used to. Well, it's the same shape, but the exterior is brand new. And it certainly didn't used to have that uh, driveway, but it makes a lot of sense since there's this drive up against the uh, bridge here that you can use to start your turnaround. A lot easier than any other way of parking on Regina Avenue that close to the corner. I see a lot of white water running down there, so let's go take a look. The lake, of course, is over there. You can see the white water through the trees there. Friday when I was here, they had a crane, so I think they were opening the spillway more. Because the, the river's getting, the lake's getting quite high, even though it's still capped with ice. It'd be thin ice, but it still has that ice cap on it for a while yet. Someone walking their dogs. We'll get up here where we can get a better look at the, uh, the water down there. Ukrainian flag flying there with the Canadian and Saskatchewan flags. Not to lose that Canadian flag. All right, let's take a look here. There's your spring runoff. And a certain smell, although not as bad as it used to be before the lake was deepened. Used to be a, quite a stench when the uh, Wa Lake opened up because of all the uh, anaerobic decay going on under the ice. Looks like a much mightier river than it actually is right now. <laughs> oh, mesmerizing. There's a jogger. There's always a dog, there's always a jogger. Sometimes there's somebody jogging and walking a dog at the same time. look back at the creek before we leave it behind. We'll walk along it tomorrow. The royal we. We if you join me. Otherwise it's just me. So yeah, it's called Lake View, but these houses are about the only ones that actually have a Lake View. Nobody else has a Lake View. And we're in Cathedral, but you can't actually see the Cathedral from our house, so they're fairly broad titles to the neighborhood. Well, just a couple of blocks and I'll be home. Over an hour today, I knew it would be walking out there, especially going down to the south end of the park. If I just turned around and come back, it wouldn't have been. But I stretched it out quite a bit by going that far south. Ooh, much quieter once you get away from Albert Street. Harrington Mews, home to Wally Knight from the Charge of Excalibur series. Another nice driveway and garage on that house. I like the looks of that house, but I've never been in it. Always been curious. I used to know people who live there, but they are long, long gone elsewhere. I mean, I still know them, but they don't live there anyway. Anyway. 
saddest thing about our house with my daughter being in third year university and her name being Alice is we're soon going to be telling people Alice doesn't live here anymore which is sad I'm not looking forward to that I have enjoyed having a daughter growing up but she's about to turn 21 so I think we have successfully grown her up Legal drinking age, even in the States. Here it's 19. Manitoba and Alberta, it's 18. So I think her first drink she ordered when we were in Calgary when she was 18. She didn't finish it, but she liked the fact she was able to order it. And she'll be home in ooh, three weeks. Uh, yeah, because I'll be in Saskatoon at uh, Sask Expo when she gets here. I really had better look at my inventory even tomorrow probably got lots of most things but it's my daw books I'm a little worried about the world shaper series I'm not sure I probably have plenty of world shaper I think I have plenty of master of the world but the moonlit world I might need to order some more No shortage of shards of Excalibur since I have a lot of stock that I got cheap when Kato Books went out of business. Lots of the city born. The paperback originals are getting thin on the ground, but you can't really get any more of those. They're still available as ebooks, but paperbacks are hard to come by. Passive Agreement I'm still good on. And of course, anything Shadowpop Press has printed. I can always get more, but I better look because I might need to order a box or two of those too. And hopefully I could still get them, but I'm, it's getting close, so I might not, but I should order them anyway. Right, I guess that's tomorrow's task then, counting books. Bookkeeping, you might say, and I just did. Okay, practically home, practically perfect in every way. All in all, a pleasant enough walk. And it should be for a day or two. Then Wednesday, I think, is when they're talking about Wednesday, Thursday snow. So we'll see if that happens. At the very least, it's going to be colder. And you know, there's still snow on that side of the street not so much on ours. Right then. No, it's not all gone. <laughs> you can see some right over there. And there's more coming this week, so watch for that. And another exciting episode of Walking in Regina. Thanks for walking with me. Bye for now.